The troubling thing, though, yesterday was to hear some critics of her making unfounded insinuations about the integrity and character of this outstanding nominee. And that's wrong. She is a judge of unimpeachable character and integrity. These critics have also chosen to ignore her extensive record of judicial modesty and restraint, a record made over 17 years on the federal bench. Instead, they focused on and mischaracterized her rulings in just a handful out of her more than 3,600 cases. It's interesting. 3,600 cases. They only find a tiny handful that they criticize, and they can criticize those only by mischaracterizing them. Let me go in one area in particular. Some Republican senators have twisted Judge Sotomayor's participation in a unanimous, a unanimous Second Circuit decision that applied a 123-year-old United States Supreme Court precedent to reject a challenge to a New York State law restriction on chuka sticks, their martial arts device. Now what she was doing was following the precedent of the United States Supreme Court. Again, one of the reasons why it was a unanimous decision of the Second Circuit. And some had trumped up a straw man by ignoring the facts of Judge Sotomayor's decision. It's easy to come to a conclusion if you ignore the facts and the law and just go to your conclusion. Of course, that doesn't make it right. They ignored the facts of her decision. They ignored the developing state of Second Amendment law. And they ignored Judge Sotomayor's testimony during her confirmation hearing, recognizing the individual right to bear arms is guaranteed by the Second Amendment. In fact, the Supreme Court's decision in Heller recognized that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual the right to keep and bear arms against federal restrictions. So before we just go off using talking points that ignore what she did or ignore what she said, I thought it might be good, Madam President, and I recognize the new uh, occupant of the chair, it might be good to kind of spoil the rhetoric by actually going to the facts. Second Circuit panel emphasized that its decision was dictated by Supreme Court precedent, something that every single member of this this chamber, as the judges should do, follow those Supreme Court precedents. In fact, as she voted otherwise, now she gets criticized for doing what a Circuit Court of Appeals judge is supposed to do, that is follow the precedent of the Supreme Court. She seemed to be caught in this Hobson choice that she violated that rule. Had they acted otherwise, had they refused to follow the Supreme Court precedent, then I'm sure she'd be attacked as being a judicial activist. Come on. Let's be fair. When we've had nominees by Republican president, presidents here, we've heard over and over again how Republicans want these people because they follow precedent. Here, they're attacking some Republicans, are attacking Judge Sotomayor, because she did follow precedent. Because she did do what a court of appeals judge is supposed to do. What I'm saying is conservative judges, liberal judges, moderate judges, moderates like Judge Sotomayor, all came to the same conclusion. You have to follow precedent. Now, it may sound like I'm doing a tutorial for a law school class, but I thought rather than having the rhetoric, let's go to the facts and let's go to the law. Because both the facts and the law are unrefutable.